Hi, today we are going to talk about the forward rate agreement of FRA in short. This is essentially a forward, but the only difference with any other forwards is that the, the agreement here is, is based on the interest rate rather than say a uh, uh, tangible uh, equity or bond or, or uh, FX. So this is a forward on interest rate. Um, Sometimes it can be confusing when, when people say what when we buy a FRA or we sell a FRA. So just think about it as um, when you buy a FRA, you're actually buying LIBOR and you're paying a fixed rate that you agree up front. Um, and you're, when you're selling or short the FRA, you're actually selling the LIBOR and you are receiving the fixed interest rate. So maybe let's start with some notation. Normally when people say um, buy a FRA, they'll indicate the maturity and the, the tenor of the LIBOR. So when, when people say, let's say for example, when there's a 3 by 9 FRA, okay, um, say notional is, notional, we need a, say notional is 1 million, we need a, something to base the interest rate upon so I have to calculate the interest rate payment or receipt. Um, let's say the fixed rate that we agree up front, okay, is four percent okay so let me draw a timeline which most people do um, to note, notate the fra agreement so we are t equals zero the three here means that refers to the maturity of the fra so this is this is the maturity and this is also the date where, where which the libel is being monitored okay um, so so we'll at, at this date we'll take a look at the LIBOR here and decide whether the agreement is profitable or, or is it a losing trade. And and the LIBOR here that we should look at is the six months LIBOR. Why? Because we have this but um, this date here, this this duration here which we says nine, so it's nine months from T equals zero, okay, which is also equivalent to six months from the maturity of the FRA. So, so basically, what it's saying is, as at the third month when the when the FRA matures, we should look at the six months LIBOR. Okay, on this date, assume that say this is five percent, and then determine what's going to happen as at the ninth month. Okay, so as at the ninth month, we are going to do calculate two numbers, the fixed rate and the floating rate. Okay, so we are so assume that we are we are buying this FRA. Okay, so this is a buy trade, and I've mentioned that when you buy an FRA, we are buying LIBOR. Okay. So, so, so when we buy light ball, we are receiving the float side. So this is a receive, and then we are paying the fixed side. Okay, calculation of the fixed and float is quite straightforward. The fixed rate is basically given by, um, I've said that fixed rate is 4%, so it's 4% over, because this is, um, we are basically talking about 6 months, right, so it's half a year by 2. So effectively, over 6 months, you are paying 2% multiplied by the 1 million, okay. So for the first side, it's, it's also simple, we know it's 5%. Over half a year times one million. Okay, so so I can write the in notation form the formula here. Um, basically, LIBOR denoted by L multiplied by time. Okay, which is 0 0.5, which is six months, and the notional. And similarly for here. Let's denote the fixed rate by k, okay, and time, and the notional, okay. 
So all in all, for this trade, we have made a profit of um, 5,000. Okay, which is basically uh, because they're receiving this amount and then paying this amount. And um, this amount is more than this amount, so I'm making 5,000. Which will be paid as at T equal to 9 months. Okay, so um, you can cut short this two formulas by writing the profit as um, notional times time into LIBOR minus fixed rate. Okay, so this is basically the, the payoff that we expect at the end of nine months. Once we know the LIBOR as at the, fifth, at the, as at the third month, sorry. So um, let's move on to the valuation of the FRA, FRA trade. Okay, just now at, at this point, I was referring to the payoff um, of the FRA trade, which is given by this formula. Let's look at the valuation. Um, we can value this FRI trade by replicating um, the fixed and floating legs separately. Let's start with um, replicating the fixed leg. What does rep replication mean? Replication means that you can do this exact same trade by using different um, different vanilla products like um, bonds or equities. In this case, I will use zero coupon bonds to replicate this entire FRA trade. I'll do the fixed rate one first. Okay, so the idea is we want to obtain this amount by doing certain trades today using zero coupon bonds. Which is, um, zero coupon bonds are basically bonds that doesn't pay coupon and um, always sold at a discount so that um, the, the pricing is very straightforward the it's um, very liquid and it's easily observable okay let's let's have the uh, another uh, diagram where i put in the values in notational form rather than uh, numbers so time Let's say this is time A, time B, okay. <clears throat> so this is basically uh, the time lapse for LIBOR is basically B minus A. All these are, are notation in years. So let's say if A is 3 months, this is 3 over 12. B is say um, 9 months, so this is 9 over 12. And then this is half, B minus A, T is equal to half, okay. Um, so, so we want to, for the fixed leg, we want to obtain this, this value, okay, as when, when it matures as a t equal to 9 months, t equal to b months, and um, let's, let's also make another assumption, we assume that the notional is 1, okay, l equal to 1, notional is not really an issue here, we assume equal to 1 because when you obtain the final valuation of the FRA, we simply multiply by whatever notion that you want. Okay, so we want to obtain this amount. We can replicate this fixed amount by selling a selling a zero coupon bond. That's I call it zero coupon bond. ZCB selling zero coupon bond of notional. T times K. Okay, so assume that the price of the bond is currently um, P B. Okay. So when we sell the bond now, we'll be receiving an amount equal to PB times T times K. Okay, so when it goes, when it reaches maturity as a time equal to B, 
um, this PB becomes one because because um, because the zero coupon bond at as a maturity will be getting back one dollar. So at maturity we'll be ending up with t times k, okay, which is basically t times k for the um, fixed rate. Okay, so this is the amount that we'll be receiving when we sell this zero coupon bond. Okay, let's try to replicate the the floating leg. Okay, um we need to do two things for the floating leg. As I said. Um so we can rec replicate Okay, the idea is to try to obtain uh, L times T at the end of the ninth month. Okay, so we, let's see how we can do that. We can replicate this by buying buy one unit of zero coupon bond. Okay, matures at A at this point okay the current price let, let me denote it as p to the power of a okay we can sell one unit zero coupon bond maturing at t equal to b price pb let me denote it as pb okay so why do we do that? Let's imagine that um, the first zero coupon bond matures at t equal a here. What happens at this point? We'll be receiving um, receiving one dollar. Okay. So as I here, we'll be receiving one dollar. So we can invest this one dollar into a say we can deposit in the bank or something. And then we can earn um, LIBOR. LIBOR over the period of T okay so by earning LIBOR over the period of T um, when we for this for the second bond when it matures as at B okay the, the LIBOR leaks will knock off and we end up with um, sorry the, the principal amount will knock off and you end up with um, L times T Okay, which is the equivalent of what of this one which which is what we are trying to drive at maybe let me write down in um, what happens after first year okay um, so when t equal a this this first zero coupon bond will give us one dollar okay so now we have one dollar we invest this one dollar in LIBOR so when t equals b, this one dollar will become one plus LIBOR into one dollar, right? Okay. So for the second zero coupon bond, this will be matured maturing as a b. Okay, as a b, and um, we will need, we can use this one dollar to knock off against this one dollar for the second zero coupon bond which means that this whole amount what remains is basically L times T okay uh, I miss out T here okay so this is L times T which is exactly what we are trying to get at for the floating leg of the FRA L times T we said we are set n as 1 okay so so basically what this means is by doing this replication we can get the same payoff as the floating leg of the fra okay so a net <coughs> so a net amount that is required under this floating leg portfolio is is basically 
PA minus PB. Okay, so now it becomes clear we have a, a valuation for the fixed leg of the, the FRA and then we have a valuation for the fixed floating leg of the FRA and the net value of the FRA is simply a difference between these two which I will write down here okay, the net value is simply the floating leg PA minus PB okay minus fixed leg PB times T times K okay we can simplify this by moving uh, PB out Okay, so this is basically the value of the FRA as at any point in time before it matures. Um, I think the value of zero coupon bond may not be familiar with some people. So some people are, are, are more familiar with um, having interest rate rather than uh, having this amount um, shown as a value of a zero coupon bond. So we can easily convert this into a interest rate format which is um, PA is simply equal to 1 over let's say RA is the rate um, for this period okay so this is simply 1 over RA expressed in annual terms so we have to multiply by A okay so assume that this is 3 months so this is um, R multiplied by 3 over 12 okay so similarly for B, we can express this as 1 over 1 plus RB multiplied by B. Okay. So this one, if you, if you put these values inside, it should be, become a more familiar formula.